guys welcome back to the channel it's gypsy here at the paper lion today's video is going to be a little different um i am going to be showing you how i made this cute little box here well actually it's a pre-made box but i'm going to show you what it started out as and how i got to this point of course this is only slightly decorated you can you know do whatever you want as far as the decorating I'm using book page today to cover uh, my things. You could always go back with like pieces of lace or whatever. But anyway, before we get started with the project, welcome back everyone to my new subscribers. I appreciate you uh, for being here to my current subscribers. You guys know I really appreciate you for staying here and sticking around with me. If you are new here and you have not um, subscribed and you think at the end of the video that this has been a great video for you or this is something that you could try, please give me a thumbs up and a subscription. Any, everybody out there, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I need some thumbs up. But anyway, this project is was inspired um, for my mom. This, well, in around my mom, um, her funeral was on Saturday. And so for keepsakes I did a bunch of like little candles in um mesh little bags with like um little just a little token for people to take home but with that I had to buy a bunch of candles so of course I started out with these uh candles here I added like um a rose essence and just you know added a, a bunch of little things to it but I'm left with a bunch of these boxes and as you guys know here on the channel I don't really like to throw things away so I was looking at these and I was like what can I do with them and I'm like they with this window already made in they would be perfect for something that you need to look you know and that it would be easier for you to just pick up and look and know exactly what's in there. So that's what we're going to do. This is a little box that we are going to be using from that. It's got a simple little closure. And see how easy that is to just open that up and get what you need and put it back and close it. All right. Well, let me show you how I did that and we will get started. First thing we're going to need to do is alter our box a little bit. So this one normally opens up on these sides. And of course that pulls out that way. I had thought about kind of just leaving it like that, but I'm like, you know, if you pull that out, everything, if you're trying to get to something over here or in the middle, you got to pull through everything over here and it's all going to just fall out. So I'm like, how can I remedy that? And so I came up with a solution. We're going to set this to the side. And we are going to open up both sides because we're going to do, we're going to have to do some cutting before we get the cutting. Let me go ahead and tell you the supplies that you're going to need. Sorry, guys. Um, you're going to need a button or something that you want to make your closure with. You're going to need, um, this is just a little ponytail holder, um, very simple little uh, ponytail holder. Um, you're going to need some kind of hole punches, like little ones for the holes or whatever. Um, I'm going to be using clamps since this is going to have a little bit heavier cardstock. I'm going to use some clamps to hold it in place while it glues. I am going to be using some cordage. You could use embroidery floss. You could use whatever you want to use um, in place of this. Of course, I'm going to be using book page to cover the unwanted pieces and you don't even I mean it's up to you how quick you want this project to be you literally do not even have to go back and cover this but I want mine to kind of look alike and not be reminded that they're you know candle boxes every time I look at it um so that I'm gonna be using three book pages for this um project and some stamps just to kind of give it a little bit of and of course ink and glue and scissors and so we're just going to open it up at both ends and since this is the plastic part we don't want to cut on this side we want to keep that side in place because that's going to be basically our hinge so what we're going to do is we're going to get these flaps out and we're just going to 
push this down to this side because we're going to be cutting along this edge right here. So however you're comfortable cutting that top edge, whatever is comfortable for you, makes you feel good, whatever, then that's how we're going to cut that. And this can, you know, a lot of boxes like this could be modified. It doesn't necessarily have to be this um, candle box. So we're just going to cut along that line. Let me put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> so how are you guys? Um, try to cut as straight as possible. Um, that'll give you the least amount of gaps, you know, at in your end project. And this can be a little tricky. Hope you guys are doing well. A box cutter would probably do better with this, but I am not great with box cutters and things like that. I'll be done. Cut this thing to ribbons. But there we are. Simple enough. And we are, while we're at the cutting, we're going to go ahead and remove these side flaps. And we're going to remove these and add these back later because we're going to add them like, but they're not going to be attached to this. That way we can open and close it. So we're just going to cut these along the crease as well. do my best to stay in frame but this is a big you know a bigger you know material that we're using today so I'll do my best all right so now that we've got these flaps off and we've got this piece like this we're going to go ahead and set this aside and we're going to get these these pieces right here covered really quick you don't have to cover these little flappy pieces right here. You just need to concentrate on covering this part. And so for this, since I got a larger area and I want to get more glue down, I'm going to be using my bigger glue bottle. I should have had it upside down waiting for me. All right, so now that we got some glue down here, just gonna glue down, just gonna wanna make sure we're gonna be covering it with the words. I want my words to you know, be right at the edge. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and do that to the second one, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and glued down and cut off one side, and I'm going to cut this side with you guys. What I will say, as I've said in videos before, the glue that I use sticks really well to um, shiny surfaces. I'm not sure what kind of glue you guys use, but if your glue doesn't hold up, you might want to either go over this, the shiny surface with a little bit of gesso, or you can simply scuff it up a little bit to make your papers um, go, uh, go on better and stick better for you. But the product that I use, um, and I'm not sponsored by them, um, is from Hobby Lobby. And if you guys need Hobby Lobby to uh, sponsor me, then I'll go ahead and start talking about their product on uh, camera. But if you want to know, you can just email me um, at my email um, at the Paper Lion online, and I, I'll be happy to um, give you the information. I don't gatekeep information. But anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead, now that we got these little sides done, we're going to go ahead and ink them. I'm choosing to go with black ink on this one. On the last one, I went with uh, a more brown.
but since I'm using a black button, I figure um, the the black ink would go great with this. And you, of course, you don't even have you do whatever you want to as far as the inking and decorating goes. You want to put pink ink. Be my guest. Do whatever you like. I give you the bones. You provide the meat. <laughs> So make this project your own. Okay, so these are going to be the flaps. And of course, since we know these parts are going to go down, if you are going to decorate the sides, make sure that when you're decorating, this is down because then this would be up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a couple of little stamps real quick. Just kind of uh, decorate the side. Actually... I'll do that once we get everything before we start gluing it back in place. I'll do that. That way we can kind of move along and keep this organized. Okay. So now from there, we are going to go through and start uh, decorate or covering this area. So from here, we're just going to lay it out like this and get it as flat as you can in your workspace because this is like I said a bigger piece that we're working with today I'm trying to get this back here to lay flat because I have limited space so remember this is going to be our our top part this this bin is going to be the back top so we're going to be covering this in that orientation so first off we're going to just take some of these scraps that you have from your other pieces and I'm going to start I'm going to make sure I get it to where my words are right there at the top and kind of just measure. You can go through and measure, excuse me, according to the size of your box because everybody may not be using the exact same box. I am not going to worry about um, giving measurements, so to speak. Um, I don't even have my ruler with me, but it would be basically you just measuring it according to whatever box you are using. And of course, this can also be done with just like a regular like little box that you get for like chocolates or whatever. You just have you could cut out a piece for the window and add some like vellum or acetate or something. This is acetate because it's more on the heavier side. But anyway, since we are going to be gluing this here. I am going to um, go ahead and make sure I measure my thing before I, I start to cut it just to make sure. And if it goes over a little bit, you can always just wrap that little bit around. Actually, it's better if it does go over just a little bit on the edge part because that way you can just kind of wrap it over and it looks more seen, um, more seen less is what is the word that I want to use. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and cut out the same like kind of size here. And let's make sure that that's going to yeah, that'll work there. So let let us go ahead and do this here. Just going to cut out the same little piece and shape. Well, we're not going to do the exact shape, but, you know, the same size. Okay, now we have our two little side pieces right here. And then we're going to have a piece that comes this way. So I want to cut off some of this. Actually... And the last one I didn't kind of fold it over and it left kind of raggedy, ragged edges. So on this one, I think I am going to overlap it a little bit. You know, sometimes when you're doing things, you learn as you go. So I am actually going to leave this just like it is. And I am just going to cut this piece off just so that it fits there. And we're going to cut straight here. Okay, so now we have a piece that will fit here. And since these pieces are going to come down, we're going to overlap that just a little bit. And that way you'll hide the seams from that one. And it'll it'll look nice. Okay, now we got 
both of our front side pieces, our side pieces, and we got this. Now we're going to sit that to the side so we can go ahead and get the pieces for the other part of the box. You don't have to worry about these flaps because we won't be doing anything like that with that. So now we're going to worry about this front part of the box. And if you're working with it upside down, just actually with my paper, it won't matter because I can't get, get it to fit like that. It'll only go to the side anyway. So it really does not matter. Okay, so I am going to, in that case, I can just push this down. It's really hard working with this thing, but you guys get the idea. So what I'm going to do is cover this part with glue and cut that off and I'll be right back. Okay, now we've got this piece covered. I could have had it, went ahead and just cut it and set it to the side, but it was easier to just glue it down and cut it. And now we're going to come back with some of our other scrap pieces. This side is optional. You know, if you don't want to do this side back here, you don't have to do it. But I went ahead and did that. So we're going to need a piece for here, here, and here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of measure this piece. And I'm going to be leaving just a little bit of overhang. Just so that it will wrap or go over this piece a little bit. So you won't see the cut edges. And we're going to bring it down under the box a little bit. So about just a little bit under. And of course you'll probably have to trim it a little bit to get to the areas, you know, where you want it to be let's see uh, that's really not just gonna go ahead. No, I'm gonna leave that the way that is I don't have, do I have another little piece over here just looking at my scraps that I have to see I'm trying to make sure that the wording goes all the way down on both sides so let's see will that scrap fit there no, that one will not. This one will fit here. So you may need a little bit extra. Um, or, you know, with this one, I'm not going to worry about it too much if it goes sideways. Or a little bit off. We're just going to work with it. Work with what we have because I'm not gonna mess up another book page just for a little cut piece like this. Okay. And we are going to cut a piece of this for this. We know it fits all the way across here basically. Well, we can cut a little bit off at the edge. We are just going to cut it like that. That way we can have a little bit to glue under the bottom so it looks more seamless. Of course, you can do that however you want to. All right, so now that we got this piece, a piece for here, the pieces. Now we have all the, the rest of the pieces that we need. Before we glue, we'll go ahead and get those inked up. So you should have two little small pieces for the back sides two for the front, one for the back, and one for the front. And I'm choosing to ink these up before because there will be some corners that touch the plastic, the acetate that you won't want to try to ink once it gets glued down. So we'll just kind of make sure we do this beforehand.
Okay, so right now we've got this flimsy box. Don't worry about that because we are going to restructure that in a minute. So let's go ahead and get our front pieces down. glue this down here and see what I mean about wanting to go ahead and ink it first because it does go right there to that and with that other piece you can just pull that around and now it will look more seamless off to the side you may have to go back and ink just a little bit I forgot about that when it curves but it'll be on the outside so it'll be easy to you know go back and ink that one and another thing I like about using the book for this is because it's going to be your own little project, something that you keep in your house, so you don't have to go back and proofread uh, what's on it. <laughs> That's one of the things that really drives me wild about using book page and um, and things that you're going to like give away or sell is that you have to make sure that it's all going to be you know, nice for the reader and appropriate. Okay. So we got that. And then we're just going to come through. I think I used, is this the right one for this one? Oh, okay. I overlapped them both. So a little bit. So that's fine. Actually, I think I want to, which one do I want to use on this one? This one is not going to over, overlap as much, but that's okay. Next time I will remember, since I'm not doing any real measurements on this, it's a kind of one of those projects that you just kind of go, you know, go as you go which I do like those kind of projects because, you know, you just end up wherever you end up. And I am, there is a little piece right here, so I am going to overlap just a little bit just so that I get that gap covered up. I don't want that showing in my piece. So it, mil it might overlap on your... Um, acetate just a little bit but that's okay all right so we got the front we've already got this part and now we're just going to go ahead and do this part really quick this back part so we're going to do our little sides and once you get you know the habit or you know or you do this maybe once or twice it does become faster you can just whip through this really quick because it's not like a super hard thing to do you just got to remember basically there's only one cut that I made I made one cut and that was it oh my god my glue sticks so fast you barely have time to to do any corrections My glue just, it's like, it just grabs, like, no joke. Okay, so right here at these edges, I'm going to make sure that they get... and where they need to be. Come back through. All these these are going to be glued in place so you don't really have to worry about it too much, but I do want to make sure that my little glued in here 
just to kind of keep it out of the way. Okay, so that is that side, and let's do this. And it's about to come together, guys. We're almost done. Let's just make sure I'm not cutting the wrong piece. Let's look from the inside. Same with that. And then I'm just going to give that a little glue. I don't have time for that one. A little glue there and a little glue there and just fold that on in that's going to be hidden anyway all right so we got one last little piece that we need to add right here got this side inked now you can choose to leave this long as I did and make a little overhang with it. Or you can choose to, you know, cut it directly the same size that it needs to be. That is up to you. Oh, finally got that little plug out that was keeping my glue from coming out. some excess glue somewhere okay now I'm just going to turn this in and get these little strips here hold it in All right, and see now that is that is it as far as the the covering goes. We got our tops, we got our front and our back, just like that. Okay, and we also have our sides that are over here. So let's go ahead and do a little stamping on these really quick. Remember, this is the bottom side, so when you're stamping, we're going to be stamping this way up. And let's get. I dropped my little acrylic block. So let's decide. And these are just like some little stamps that I got from the Dollar Tree that I haven't used yet. So I thought I would use those. Um, which ones are going to fit on this side? I don't want. Let's see. I think I'll use this one. And. Which one is a similar size? And this one. And we'll just keep it simple. Nothing too dramatic. And I think another reason why I'm doing it with black today is because, well, this, this one with black is my... Um, what is this? My walnut stain. I've used it so much that it is gone. <laughs> it's dry on me. So I don't know if I need to spray it with some water or add. I don't know. But anyway, this is not going to fit all the way, but that's okay. We're just going to get some of the impression. On the last one, I tried to stamp it once I had already put the box together. Needless to say, that didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to now, because this is going to be on the opposite side, I'm just going to flip this one. That way they kind of still match. You know, you can do however you want. But I think I want mine to, you know, be opposite like this. Okay. And now we'll just sit this one to the side. Move on to this one. Okay. 
Make sure you like what I have no idea, guys. <laughs> I put that one upside down when I could have just literally done them like that. So now it has to go upside down. So that will be my um reminder to think things through. <laughs> Oh, it happens and it usually happens on camera and we're not going to fuss or muss about it. We're just going to leave it as is. Um, and let's see if there's anything I want to put here in the center. Let's see what I have over here in this stamper because I think it does need something in the center now. Let's try this. Hmm. Or something like that. Let's do this one in the center. Now let's see if that's going to stick in this. Okay. Oh, that's cute. This one would be cuter if it was not upside down, <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay, um, and let's see, do we want to keep the same thing on the front? I think that I actually want to go with something else for the front. I love these little birds, so I'm going to use these birds. I don't... Hmm... I don't know why it's not sticking, so I guess I'll just have to use my hands. But I'm done with these two pieces, so let's move on to this. I'm going to do right up here because we're going to have to poke a little hole there. So I don't want it to be, I mean, you. it doesn't matter, I guess, if it if it does, you know, the hole punches a little bit in there, but I, I don't want it to distort that so I'm just going to kind of put it right here toward the center and that's cute and then you can decorate this as much as you like I'm going to kind of keep it simple put that there my button is going to be there so I don't really want to put anything there but I do want to put something on these little sides here so let's see what we can fine to put right there this little one right here I think will work and if you have it upside down remember your your orientation because this is going to be so we're going to have to put it upside down so it goes right side up when we turn it and if I get that wrong on camera I might cry <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, we <laughs> I put my ink upside down. Over here. Oh my God. Thank God. I put this black, this, um, clear mat down or that would have went right onto my lace, um, thing. Let's see if I can kind of get some of that off of there. You know what in the world I'm thinking. Okay. Now, let's see if I got that right. Yes, I did. Okay, so now we're going to start assembling um, this piece back together. So, but let me go ahead and make sure everything is inked the way it should be inked. This is your time to make sure that you've got your corners inked, your bottoms inked, whatever you plan to ink. Let's go ahead and ink it before we start gluing things together. Yes, yeah, so everything so far looks neat. Okay. All right, so we can set that the ink to the side. We got our stamps to the side. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and create our little closure here at the top. Let's first start by getting our button down here. We are going to put a button here in the middle for the closure. So we're going to poke some holes or like really 
it doesn't have to be I don't have my whole pokey thing with me here um I don't know why I don't have it so what I'm going to do I literally don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> give me a second I never come to the table with everything I have the last one I just kind of poked a hole because they had one of the little um, shaft things on it. But this one is going to be a little different. So let me see. I'm going to need, let me see if these scissors will go through there. Hopefully I'm not shaking my camera too hard. But let's, let's try to get this to the middle as much as possible. Okay, so we've got four little dots there. Let's see if my hole punch will reach all of those. Okay, first one. And then it's not going to reach the second ones. It's just not going to. So we're just going to poke a hole with them they're going to be kind of covered with the button just kind of round those a little bit to make it easier to get our um, our cordage in so basically what I'm going to do I thought this was black but it looks brown but I guess it doesn't matter nobody's going to be looking at this really but me and even you know so we're just going to get a little bit of cordage. We're going to cut two little strips because we're going to be tying. We're going to push through and tie each one off. Okay, so the first two. Now this is going to be a little tricky because as I said with the other one, what I did, what I'm going to go ahead and do is tie these off here. Once I get them where I want them to be, just go ahead and tie those once. And then we'll go ahead and get this one in. And put that over there. Okay. And tie that one off there. That one probably should be a little longer. All right, so now we're going to have to work on getting these inside of these holes. And sorry if my lighting is not the greatest today. Um, it is gloomy outside. Okay, so we're going to work on getting, okay, there's one. One through. I think what I'm going to do is get some glue on the edges of these so that they can be easier to deal with. Let those glue in place. And let those sit just a minute. That way they'll be easier to go through the hole and all the little bits aren't. And that's the one thing, especially when you're using cordage that has like multiple little threads going with it. They all want to go a separate way. So let's go ahead and make sure that they don't. By just giving them a little help. Now, after all of this, if I have to go back and, and make this one longer, I'm going to cry. <laughs> okay, let's see. But this, my trial and error saves you yours because I've done all the hard work. Okay, let's see if we can't get that in there easier. One down, 
two down, three down, all right, now, <laughs> now, perfect. So now while we're in here, we're going to just tie these together. This time we're going to tie them in a knot. Each one in a little knot so that it doesn't go anywhere. If you want to be extra secure with this, you can glue these knots. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I am going to trim those. Okay. And then I'm going to use a little punch out to kind of cover the, over that just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect but it will make sure that it is glued in place. Just make sure you give that a, a generous amount of glue because you're gonna be asking that to do an awful lot for you. Okay. Okay. Make sure you get that burnish down. Okay, now while that finish gluing, finishes gluing, we are going to give ourselves a hole here in the middle to kind of line up for where we're going to be. So about centered would be roughly in here. So let's go ahead and poke a hole. roughly in the center of that if it's a little off it's okay so now we're going to take our twist tie and we're going to give it one little twist and tie like this just so that it has a little knot in it and we're going to bring that knot all the way down here to this metal piece Most ties have that little metal piece, and that metal piece is perfect because it will keep it from pulling out of the hole. Okay, so now we have that there. Go ahead and feed this through. Try to anyway. This one looks a little bit thicker than the tie that I used earlier, and I noticed that it is blue. The other one that I used was black. So I'm going to go ahead and just help that out just a little bit. Not much, but just a little because we don't want it to be too big. I will probably go back later and add, take this out and make a black one because it's not going to be glued in or anything. So it really won't be hard to change out, but I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> okay. It's going to give me a run for my money, y'all. The little black one that I used earlier went right in, no problem. Okay, so now we have that in. Just going to make sure that that's going to be tight enough for that, and it will. All right, now we can start on our final step, and that's putting, gluing everything back together. So what we're going to do is take our sides, and we are going to first, I'm going to open this up. We're going to line this one up to where it matches, lines up with everything, because remember, we've got to close it. So we're going to glue this flap down right here. 
where all that ink came from. Glue that. Okay. Making sure that that is lined up properly. You want to make sure that goes all the way in where it needs to be. Like that. You do not want any gaps. So we're going to go back and make sure that that gets pressed in place like it needs to be. Now we're going to glue these flaps right here. Okay. And because I don't have time to just sit and hold these, that's where these clamps are coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp these. So while that's gluing, I can go ahead and move on to the other side when I'm done with this one. So we're just gonna make sure like, a, like with the other one, we're getting a generous amount of glue in here. supposed to be don't try to glue it too far in just make sure it lines up naturally like it was at first okay okay so now we got that side okay everything looks good so far and we are just going to repeat that over here Just lining it up the way it should be. We don't want it too far in. We don't want it too far out. It needs to be exactly where it would have been before we cut it. Okay. Bring these flaps in and get some glue on that. get that paper inside no point in and overlapping it if you don't intend to get it inside okay. this part you know admittedly is the messiest part of the whole thing because you got to make sure you get all the glue and everything where it goes One more clip over here. Just want to make sure I'm getting all the paper glued down. Sometimes you don't get your edges. 
now is the time to make sure you do. Okay, so lining that back up like like before, making sure everything is lined up. Because if you don't line it up properly, your interior won't fit when it's time to put that back in. So we got this glue down. All right, we'll give that a couple of seconds. And I'll be right back when that's glued. All right, guys, it's been a few seconds. Um, I think that's had enough time to catch. So I'm going to go ahead and take these clips off. And then we can go ahead and bring our insert back. And we're going to put that in there. I noticed that the other one, I put it upside down. I had these like that. But if you're going to be using these for like, um, you, cause you could use these for die cuts, you could choose to leave these up and that way you can use these for little pockets as well to stick something else off in there. So even with that, you have more than one option. All right. And so we just slide that back in there and there you go. You got a cute little box from something that you possibly would have thrown in. I'm going to have to go back and, and glue down my little edges. Obviously, I didn't get all the way to the edge, which sometimes happens. That's okay. I'll do that off camera. But there we go. We have a cute little box, and you can open that up, and you can store all kinds of little things in there. It's got a great, like, great area. And then the most beautiful part of it is that you can pull it out, and you can look and see exactly what you have that you want to decide. Like if you want to go through and take the time to color coordinate your ribbons or your die cuts or whatever you have, here you go. A great way, a window box that you can use for your projects. It'll help organize and it'll help keep things, you know, where you need them and where you want them. Easy access. But anyway, guys. I hope that you like this video. If this is something that you think you might be able to use with another box or you like this tutorial, please leave me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe. I am getting back into my groove of putting uh, videos out on a regular basis. Um, and for my returning subscribers, again, thank you guys for being here. I really love you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.